For three decades, thousands of people have been a part of an experiment so influential that it changed how doctors think about diabetes. This is the Diabetes Prevention Program Outcomes Study, or DPPOS, a long-term experiment that proved type 2 diabetes could be reversed. Few studies have reshaped medicine more profoundly. But in early 2025, the Trump administration abruptly canceled its funding. As scientists scramble to save DPPOS, it's worth taking a nonpartisan look at this study. So today, we'll explore why this specific research began, what it discovered, and what it might mean for diabetics and future generations worldwide. Back in the mid-1990s, type 2 diabetes was exploding. Researchers noticed people developing pre-diabetes, blood sugar higher than normal but not yet diabetic. In fact, the DPPOS study first introduced the term pre-diabetes to describe this high-risk state. The National Institutes of Health launched the Diabetes Prevention Program in 1996 as a five-year clinical trial at 27 sites nationwide. This was extremely ambitious at the time. Over 3,200 volunteers of diverse backgrounds joined. They all had either high blood sugar or a family history of diabetes. The question, could intensive lifestyle changes or medication keep people from becoming diabetic? Researchers split participants into three groups. The lifestyle change group focused on diet and exercise, all guided by intense coaching and classes. The second group took a common diabetes drug, metformin, and received standard diet and exercise advice. And the third group took a placebo pill and got standardized advice to serve as a control group. It may sound strange today, but this was a radical trial for its time. In 2001, the results came in. And now, this may be hard to believe, but these findings completely changed the game. Lifestyle intervention cut the incidence of diabetes by 58% compared to the placebo. For older adults over 60, the results were even more impressive. Their risk of developing diabetes dropped by more than 70%. Metformin also helped, though less than lifestyle changes. It reduced the progression to diabetes by 31% relative to the placebo. It worked particularly well for younger adults, people with obesity, and women who'd experienced gestational diabetes. In the early days, researchers saw metformin as a completely safe drug, but there were unexpected side effects that were later received. At the time, all of this was all a breakthrough. For the first time, science had solid proof that type 2 diabetes could be delayed or prevented. Doctors began screening more actively for prediabetes, knowing that early intervention could make a difference. But a big question remained, would these benefits last? Preventing diabetes for a few years is one thing, delaying it for decades is another. So the NIH extended the study. In 2002, an impressive 88% of the original participants agreed to stay involved, allowing scientists to track their health for years to come. At the 10-year mark, the results were still holding. Those in the original lifestyle group showed a 34% lower incidence of type 2 diabetes. The metformin group maintained an 18% risk reduction. Not quite as good, but an improvement nonetheless. Both groups also had better blood pressure and cholesterol numbers with the lifestyle group needing fewer medications. Even at the 15-year follow-up, the power of early intervention was clear. The gap between groups persisted long after the intensive program ended. Early lifestyle intervention continued to protect participants, demonstrating that taking action during the prediabetes window creates lasting benefits. And here's where it gets even more impressive. 
the study showed these approaches make economic sense too. The lifestyle program was found to be cost effective, meaning that the health benefits justified the program's costs. In public health, it's rare to find interventions that save money, but this study is a fantastic example where upfront investment ultimately saved money in the long run. Not to mention the value of keeping people in the job force and the quality of life value. And thankfully, the DPP and the DPPOS studies haven't just sat in academic journals, they've changed real world policy. Off the back of DPP's success, community-based programs popped up to replicate the lifestyle intervention for others at risk. YMCA gyms, local clinics, and employers started offering 16-week diabetes prevention courses modeled in DPP's curriculum. Over 250 such programs sprouted up across the country, bringing DPP-style coaching to tens of thousands of people beyond the original study. These efforts were bolstered by the CDC's National Diabetes Prevention Program, which packaged the lifestyle approach for wider dissemination. But perhaps the biggest vote of confidence came from Medicare. In 2018, Medicare officially began covering diabetes prevention program services for people with prediabetes. This was a landmark decision. It meant the federal government was willing to pay upfront for diet and exercise coaching to prevent disease, rather than just paying for drugs and surgeries after diabetes develops. The evidence from DPPOS that the approach saves money and improves health in the long run was key to making the case. In essence, DPP turned prevention from an abstract ideal to a tangible, billable service. In real terms, it meant that people who were able to live better lives, reducing the risk of diabetes complications like blindness, leg amputation, and premature heart disease. The study also inspired further research, including the Look Ahead trial, which examined whether weight loss could reduce cardiovascular events in people who already had diabetes. From the very beginning, this study was built on a hunch that only public money would indulge. That nudging metabolism early might save an entire generation from type 2 diabetes. When Congress bankrolled the trial through the NIH in the mid-1990s, no shareholder presentation could justify the wait. 5, 10, then 30 years necessary to watch illness not happen. Yet the wager paid off. This publicly funded research didn't just change our understanding of diabetes, it created ripple effects throughout modern medicine. Take those popular weight loss drugs you've been hearing about, Ozempic, Wegovy. The science behind them has deep roots in government-funded research. Decades ago, researchers working with NIH grants isolated a gut hormone called GLP-1 and proved it could stimulate insulin production. Years later, another federally funded scientist discovered a similar molecule in Gila venom that lasted longer in the bloodstream. Private companies initially showed little interest. The science seemed too strange and too risky. But once the concept was proven through public research, pharmaceutical companies developed today's blockbuster GLP-1 drugs. In recent clinical trials, one such drug helped 84% of people with prediabetes return to normal blood sugar levels. If you carry a GLP-1 pen in your handbag, or if your insurer finally covers a YMCA diabetes prevention class, you're living inside a sprawling experiment begun by taxpayer-funded research. How important is all of this? In 2024, the original researchers, Habner and Mojsov, collected the Lasker DeBakey Prize, Biomedicine's Medal, for a discovery that industry had initially deemed unbankable. Science that was originally considered unprofitable, but has changed millions of lives for the better. This 30-year research journey 
has transformed our understanding of a disease that was destroying lives three decades ago. It revealed that insulin resistance is at the core of type 2 diabetes and showed us multiple paths to reverse this condition through diet, exercise, medication, and now newer therapies. It taught us that prevention isn't just possible, it's practical. And it demonstrated that some questions can only be answered by patient public investment the kind that looks beyond quarterly earnings. As researchers fight to save this landmark study, we're reminded that scientific progress is both powerful and fragile. And next, if you want to learn the fundamental lessons to reverse diabetes, watch our ultimate guide to reverse insulin resistance. We'll leave a link on the screen. Remember to click like and subscribe to see more from us.